to Romans 16. I'm coming out of the New Living Translation. And again, Paul is writing this letter from Corinth. He, as far as we understand and know, he's in prison, um, but he's writing from this location. And so let's see what he, he, he wants to say to the saints as he finalizes a few things here. Um, he start off by saying, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church in Shinchera. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. So right here off, off the bat, Paul acknowledged one of the women that have been a blessing and instrumental um, to him in ministry. Okay, he, he uh, she has a name that is, and some cultures have been used for pagan gods, um, the Apollo name. And I want to bring that out because she nor God changed her name, despite the association of the culture. And so many times we try to um, make sure we ain't associated with certain things that don't matter. Try to disassociate with certain things, almost somewhat allude to, we believe it as well. I, I don't know about you, but there be times me and Kim be walking and, you know, they have this thing about, oh, don't split a pole and, and all that or, or don't do not do this. And, and it's amazing. We don't practice this stuff, but this stuff comes to mind when you come to that situation and you have to make a deliberate choice that I'm going to split this pole. Just to make sure that the devil know I ain't buying into this foolishness. And, 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 and so she did not go about trying to change her name. And as I said, neither did God, because some stuff we give too much attention to to try to prove that we we're not something. And, and so another point as I was studying that talked about Phoebe, it, it talked about she was respected by the church. She was one that was respected by, not only by Paul, but she was respected by people in Christendom, okay? It also said that she was a wealthy supporter, okay? Um, she was wealthy. She supported Paul's ministry financially. Okay. Um, she was considered to be the one who also delivered this letter to the people in Rome as well. And so she played a, 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 a major part in getting this letter to the Romans as well as supporting Paul. And, and it's amazing how Paul starts off with saying, I commend to you our sister, okay? In other words, I'm vouching for her. I recommend her. So if, if, if you want to be a blessing to me, um, treat her good. And, and it's a blessing when someone can speak well of you. It's a blessing when someone can can talk good on you. Uh, the old church, um, and it's not too old, but uh, and I, I, well, Bishop Bishop Smith still did it when we left. Wrote letters um, to 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 go past to the to your new pastor. Okay, my old pastor used to do it as well would write letters um, and tell you not to not to open it, just give it to your to your new pastor. And you you suppose that there was good things in in the letter. Um, and and I've had to I had to write a few recommendations 
letters of recommendation. And one, I recall writing that I didn't want to write that because I wasn't going to write it because the person decided that they was going to leave the ministry, take their stuff um, off the pastor wall that they had already said that, oh, pastor, we giving this to you and, and this is to the church and it's going to stay there. And they got upset and left wrong. And so I didn't get I wasn't going to write the letter because they took their stuff. That That's fine. The church had money. We could have bought it anyway. The issue was how they left, okay, um, and which wasn't in the right spirit. So I wasn't going to write the letter. So when they requested a letter, I wrote the truth. Okay? I, I, I wrote the truth. I did talk about when they was faithful. I didn't leave that out. But I also talked about how they left. Because, you know, you wanted this. So so uh, here it is. And the thing is, we have to understand that in this walk, there are going to be times that we, we have to make some hard calls. And one of the things I noticed in the, in these first 14 or 15 verses is that Paul is particular about who he, who he acknowledges, okay? Um, he's making points about people that he had exper good experiences with. And so uh, Phoebe was one of the first ones, and he said, welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people, okay? So she ain't just served me, but she's worthy of honor, okay? Um, she She's one that I consider to be worthy of honor. Help her in whatever way um, she needs. She has been helpful to many. Not only me, she, I didn't try to hold her and say, okay, um, she gonna be a blessing to me and me only, but no, no, she's been a blessing to many. Is there any comments on, on verses one and two um, in Paul's statement here? Yes, sir. Bless, yes, sir. Bless, you. Bless you. One of the one things, of the things that, that I know about, about, about when Adam Paul spoke to Phoebe was uh, uh, that, that he didn't permit women, women to, to minister, minister or mm -hmm. she was she in the picture, picture and she, she Ministry. ministry. I think too many times we brought up in the other people's opinion about how roles certain genders in the body of Christ. Where it's clear that God has used many women to further the ministry. And when Paul said, I commend her to you, meaning that she said, you said, she is my proof. We, we, we talk, talk about, about social, social psychology, psychology the word that we use called conformity, conformity where, where what, what group conforms or causes groups to conform, conform to, to the way that way others think they do. do. Um, it's um, along so the lines of assimilation, where you take in cultures and thoughts of others and make it your own. So what I think about immediately is how do we conform to this idea that God wants this unity in the body? When all of and us are supposed to be pushing, pushing for, for the same thought, thought of kingdom ministry. ministry. This, is, this what is what I think about. about. And, and so, so now, now when, I when I think about, about the things, things that, that are going, are going on, on in, in the church, church now, now, this, this scripture particularly, particularly speaks to uh, the thought that, that there is no disunity. And we're all on the same page trying to bring about kingdom business. And that's what we need that's what, That's we, what need we need to be doing, doing right now. Right now. It's, it's, it's focused focus on what God's business is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, ma'am. The other, the thing that came to mind is the scripture in Hebrews thirteen and seventeen, where it talks about obey those that have the rule over you. But then it also goes on to say. Um, they keep watch over your souls as ones who must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. And it made me think about when Paul is going throughout this chapter, the people that he's speaking well of, this is profitable for them. They weren't giving him problems. They weren't causing him any issues. They served well. And 
it's important that we remember that even now that when we serve, it would behoove us not to give our pastors any trouble. It would behoove us not to be um, contentious and backbiters and doing all of these things because the Bible tells us don't let them don't don't let your pastor get be sad or grieved because they're your pastor. Be one that they can recommend, that they can say, receive this one because they've done well. That in your letter, if you get one, <laughs> that it says the truth about it and the truth would be that I served well, that I was faithful, that he could depend on me, that she knew that I was going to be where I said I was going to be, that I wasn't bringing reproach and that it wasn't I wasn't an embarrassment. So it's important that we remember that um, because it we can cause problems for our leaders by just being people who are difficult to lead. And that's not just saying about, you know, different personalities and having to learn each other, but continually being difficult is unprofitable for us. Mm -hmm. And so the, the benefit that Phoebe and Aquila and all these that are in this chapter received, they received a, a reward from God because it was, pro they were profitable. They helped Paul and they would continue to help because that was who they were and they were doing things as unto God. So it's important that we remember this isn't just for pastor. This is also so that I, it's profitable for me so that God is pleased with me and that I am pleasing God by, by doing my very best not to cause my leader any trouble. Mm -hmm. Elder Norman. Sorry about that echo. echo. I still, still got it. Got it. Um, um, what I what I'm about, about there's, there's questions, questions talking, 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 not, an not an interest for the leader. The leader that, that one of the things I, I always thought, but I'm supposed, I'm supposed to, be. and I don't yeah, have I don't to be. I'd be, be, be one one one, one sheep that, that doesn't does work, work in trouble. I, I do that even at work, but particularly when it comes to leading God's people, it's already hard enough to deal with situations that come around that arise with just being a pastor and a leader, let alone when you have people that are supposed to know better, do better. You know, I always believe that is I, I should make the pastor's job easier, not hurt, not 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 make it harder. And if I go to work in a in a civilian or a secular atmosphere and I don't give my 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 boss grief and I want a good rapport and you know when those EPRs are due and I want to get that five you know, I make sure I go above and beyond. Why not give the same mindset to those that lead me? I believe it's a relationship thing. I think it's, it starts with God and it ends with God. And if I am serving God, then my under shepherd, who is the pastor that God placed over my soul care, I'm supposed to give him or her that same reverence in the essence of respect. So I believe that if we choose to serve God well, we will by default serve each other well. And if the pastor has to give a chastising word or correcting word, then maybe that's something that we're not doing that we need to get right and not take it out on the shepherd or the woman of God, man of God, because they have to be the conduit because they got to stand. You, Pastor Washington, got to stand before God and give an account for everything you did with the sheep that he entrusted to you, even if it is online. And one of the things that Paul brought out here is that, okay, Phoebe is a deacon. He, he makes this plain that she's a deacon in the church, and, and it goes on to just talk about her service unto the Lord. And we know the scriptures say a deacon should be apt to teach. Uh, and, and, and so there, there's a lot of things, and I think you brought it out earlier, Elder Norman, where that um, Paul said he suffered not a woman to teach. But when we look at that, we look at back then, because he also made the statement about he would not have a novice um, to teach. So it didn't matter if you was male or female. If you was a novice, um, you was not to teach. And 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 that and that's the whole thing. And I think sometimes when we're trying to prove a point, we'll extract one thing from the scripture versus the big umbrella of the thing that this was more about 
are you ready to teach versus are you old lady or, or not? Because he said, I suffer not a novice. To, to, so it don't matter if you're male or female. And then, then back then, that first century, you know, the women wasn't allowed to be to be learned, wasn't allowed to go to school and learn certain things. So it was all connected to, are you ready to teach? Because when it comes down to this word of God, everybody don't need to be teaching mm -hmm. because you're going to be judged. OK, we're going to be judged. And and so if we saying that this is that and, and we saying the wrong thing. And so now we got 15 people going to believing in it and going the wrong way. And you you're going to have to give a count of that. I'm going to have to give a count of that. This is why everybody should not be teaching a scripture. Talk about lay no hands suddenly on no man. OK, this ain't about don't lay your hands on them, get them healed. That means don't lay your hands on them to send them out in ministry because this ain't for everybody. And I don't care how glamorous it looks. It ain't for everybody. Uh, I don't care if if, if somebody um, spoke over you and told you that, oh, you're a preacher and you're this and you're that. If you realize that, no, nah, that ain't me. You need to go ahead on it and, and back down and 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 be like, you know. I know y'all call me elder. I know y'all call me minister. I know y'all call me evangelist, but really that's what my last pastor called me. And I ain't getting ready to play with God. That ain't me. Oh, okay. And 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 and, and that's okay. And, and and I don't say this out of disrespect. Um, but Elder Chapman told us that how he became pastors because there was nobody else. So they thrust him into that. And he and he also went on to say he know God did not call him to be no pastor. So 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 it would I we have to commend a man like that that would say when the bishop come and say, hey, is this church available to say, you know what? You can have the church. It ain't that I don't want to do it. It's that I ain't been called to do it. And if you ain't been called to do it. Leave that alone. Let somebody that's been called to do it, do it because you don't want to get yourself in trouble with God. Is there anybody else before we move on to verse um, three through five? Oh, yes, sir. I just wanted to, I don't want to belay the moment, but this is a teaching moment about what scripture says and how we have to understand the context of what scripture says. And you mentioned it, Pastor. When you said that when Paul mentioned that he doesn't uh, permit a woman to, to lead or speak over a man, we got to take that in the context of the culture that Paul came from. Also, Paul was talking to a uh, Gentile converts. And in that world at that time, women had just as much rights as men in that part of the world. They were able to hold office. They were able to vote. They had a voice in how society was ran. But what happened was when they would come together as a church, the women became disruptive because something may have been said. So they wouldn't hold their peace until they got home. They would speak about it right there in the service and it would become a, a, a moment of contention. So when Apostle Paul was writing, he was saying that he will that the women learn in silence so they wouldn't be disruptive when the church would come together because they was used to that liberty. So it wasn't that Paul Apostle was saying he doesn't permit women to teach ever at all. It was just in that incident that he was saying that we need to, they need to learn in silence and, and, and not disrupt the meetings that was coming in. And if you look at the historical context, this was just a regular occurrence. What we would think would be chaos was just a regular meet in that culture and in that society. Just wanted to point that out, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Anybody else before we move on to verse three through five? All right. Go on to verse three in the New Living Translation. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Greet my brother, greet my dear friends, F. Epin, Epinetus, um, he, he was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower 
of Christ. See, again, Paul is being particular about who he's calling out, who he's greeting um, in Rome, because he's not in Rome. He's in Corinth, and he's writing this letter, and he's greeting some of the saints there, and he's talking about um, Priscilla and Aquila. Um, and if you notice, this husband and wife team, which studies said, excuse me, that their husband and wife team, they're much different from Ananias and Sapphira. Okay. They, they, they not, they, they not the same. They don't have the same spirit as, as these folks. Okay. Um, they invited Paul, according to study, they invited Paul to live with them. Okay. Um, they were saved before Paul. Okay. They was close friends with Paul. It's okay to get close to, to leaders. It, it's okay to, to be close. So sometimes people don't, sometimes leaders don't want people to be close. And then sometimes people don't want to be close because of whatever the reason is. And, and when it's from a leader to, to, uh, to a people's standpoint, sometimes it's because of how leaders been treated before. And uh, I have a, a word for leaders that you're gonna have to get over that be, be, because you we can't keep holding that. We can't hold that against people that God is really now sending into your life, into your space. Just because you let people in that wasn't supposed to be in, don't keep me out. Get over, acknowledge the fact that they never should have been in. But now the ones that God really have sent, let, let, let them in. Um, because they can serve you well. They, they can help you. They can minister to you, um, to you and and for you. And, and so Paul is saying that, hey. Uh, I, here's this Priscilla and Aquila. They're my co-workers in ministry for Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Y'all, everybody ain't trying to risk their life for, for you. And we got to, uh, we got to learn how to simply acknowledge the difference that people bring to the table. It goes a long way. It goes further than money. Acknowledgement can go a long, long way. Uh, okay, that that Paul said they risked their life for me. That says to them, man, even if he didn't say nothing when it actually happened, he saw it. He acknowledged it. It meant something to him. That has a way of pushing us a little bit further. To say, man, I I I I appreciate the fact um, that you said something that you that you remember, and and it's so important that at some point in our ministries and prayerfully, it won't always be at the end of a ministry when it's time for people to move out that we acknowledge the good of them, but we can say something. We can acknowledge the good as they are on their journey because you never know. They might be getting ready to give up. And just the, just the mere fact that you paid attention, you mentioned it, it meant something to them. And this is what Paul is doing here. He also said, greet my dear friend Epinetus. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ, okay? That province of Asia was Corinth, okay? He's saying that he was the first one to become a follower of Christ. So Paul wasn't trying to be like, okay, I brought this here, and, and, and because of me, y'all are saying, no, 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 no. He acknowledging that, okay, when he got there, that this work had already started. He just came there on assignment, to help move it forward. And so, so no one is trying to, Paul is basically saying, I didn't come here to try to 
take his place or to move him to the side or to cause people not to, to remember him. But I just came to enhance and further this ministry. And so many, so often people get threatened when people come in that is as gifted or, or more gifted. And we don't have to be threatened because, man, one of the things is you can't beat me being me. All right. I can't beat you being being you, and it's it's amazing. We we can we can try, but we 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 won't succeed. And 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 I thought about how our last experience over in Germany, how that bishop was a preacher, and how God surrounded. There was no other preachers, if you will, that she was surrounded by. She was surrounded by teachers that brought balance to the ministry. And so she didn't, nobody could contend with her with squalling, okay? All of us would lose our voice. All of us would, 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 would it wouldn't even make sense to us, but he surrounded her with teachers, okay? And one of the good, the best things about it is when a church can function and everybody is functioning in their role, Man, ain't not, ain't nothing like a, a a good unity and fellowship. So so Paul is acknowledging how these people gave Priscilla and Aquila gave their life for for him, as well as how Epinetus was the first person um, follower of Christ in that area. Anybody else? At, before we move on to verse six through nine, yes, sir. I was waiting to see if anybody else had some, sir. No, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. One that that point. Um, I grew up in a crossroad um, when I came up um, in the ministry, where you had that mindset that there had to be a segregation between the pastor and the laity. I personally don't know where it came from. Maybe you can explain it. You've been around a lot longer than I have, um, but I remember people saying how. They would visit some edifices and the pastor, bishop, apostle wouldn't even get a benediction in the sanctuary. They'd go to their office somewhere and give it. Now, I don't know if that, that, you know, was because they were tired or I don't know where it came from. I know a lot of people will say that, you know, you got to be careful who touch you, who get around you. But personally, I, I just never, never thought about it. Um, but it's to your point, I know that it it has to be a balance where where you and I had a conversation before we left Germany, I don't need to get into the intricacies, but my mindset is always, you're my pastor. You said I will, you will always be my big brother, but you wouldn't be my spiritual father, which totally fine. But in my mind, I always see, okay, you are, you're the pastor, so you have an anointing that God has entrusted you with. And as one that is under that anointing, there should be a threshold, if you will, where I respect the office enough to know that there's going to be times where I need to differentiate between how I respond and how I interact with you. And I think that that goes, that should go across the whole board where we, we understand that being, being the pastor is God has given an anointing that we need to respect regardless if, you know, uh, we can be on a first name basis or whatever, the, but the, the point is that respect the office and the anointing because that's what God entrusted. So the anointing for uh, Paul to put on Priscilla and Aquila was because they respected where he was and what he did. There was no oscillation. You know, I I understand my place. And, and, and to be honest, even as a youngster, you know, I always looked at it like there there there's I don't have to be friends with Pastor Washington in order for there to be an effective relationship, if that makes right. sense. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to say this point and I'm going to let it go. I also believe it's important to know those that labor among you. You know, when, when people tell you who they are, believe them, you know, and because I'm talking about my pastor, I'm going to use you. You you know, you said I'm a I'm not talkative. I'm, a, I'm an introvert by nature. Mm -hmm. So if I get around you, I wouldn't expect you to do anything else. I won't I wouldn't come around you and try to make your temperament fit into my temperament. I think that's where a lot of the discomfort and the arguments or even the misunderstandings come from is because we can't force people to treat us the way that we want to be treated. I treat you the way I want to be treated. But at the same time, I respect the fact that 
you may not talk a lot. And if you want to sit in silence, particularly like what I learned as an adjunct before the preacher preach, you don't need to be having no full blown conversation with him or her. Let them be in God's presence and hear because God may flip that message upside down. But that's just one example of how I think a lot of people get hurt or get misunderstandings about the leadership is because we have to examine our place. How can I be the most effective sheep to support the ministry? And being the best friends with pastor may not always be the gifting because pastor has he has a mantle and we or we need to respect that. So I think that's why Paul was able to acknowledge Priscilla Aquila and the rest of those that he did because they respect the office in which he held. Despite him being in prison. Um, and, and so which is a is a very good point because sometimes we will judge leaders based off of their status. Um, and we will respond to them or respect them rather um, based off of these off of their status. And I see your hand and we have to be extra careful um, with that because, whether we believe it or not, everybody is not going to be rich and everybody is not going to pass to make a mega church. The issue is, can I be obedient to God with three families? Can God trust me with three families? Because the only way a person get responsibility of many mm -hmm. is that they have to be faithful with few. The scriptures say, if you be faithful um, over a few things, I will make you ruler over, over many. So before things blow up, you got to understand, but Bishop Jakes tell you all the time that there was a Sunday school class in West Virginia, okay? That there was a broken down car that people had to push to get it started because it was stick shift. OK, uh, and, and so forth and so on. And so when you when you really go back and you listen to the people that are big in ministry, it's more than they can preach. Mm -hmm. And I hear Elder Norman say quite often that I don't want what you have. I don't want what this one have because I don't want to go through what they went through to get what they have. Y'all, it ain't it ain't it ain't fun to, to have to pray for, for God to. To, to uh make ends meet yeah. for 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 your faith to get built up and then and then now that your faith is built up it's still similar type of stuff but at a different higher level no 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 um and and and, and so um thank god for where he's at be faithful where you at mm -hmm. um and god will do the rest, um, Minister Arthur. Yeah, um, God bless you, Pastor. Bless you and everyone on the on the line. Well, um, I think um, I believe also that, from my perspective, when what Paul was also extending in his regards to Priscilla and uh, Aquila, is is also because they were faithful um, servants. You mm -hmm. know, they were faithful and they. They believe in the vision. Okay. They believe in the vision. You know, Paul was going around building different churches, you know, and stuff like that. And and he also said, not only to me, not only did they risk their life for me, but among other churches. So it was something that they believe they both of them were a, a faithful servant that believed in the vision. And the, and, and the mission of the church. You know, sometimes we have pastors or we will be serving under pastors that, you know, we feel like we cannot question because they are pastors, right? We can't question even when they're doing something wrong, you know, when they, but we got to be very, maybe I might be wrong, but if I know and my spirit, the spirit of God is who dwells within inside of me is telling me that, you know what, what this person is saying is totally out of line. I'm not going to question the person in front of everybody, but I think behind closed doors and say, hey, you know, I heard you mentioned this, but could you break it down a little bit? You know, and I could give a prime example when I was teaching uh, Romans 14, and I said something that, you know, it wasn't clear 
you know, Pastor, you came back and said, hey, you know, uh, preacher, you said this. Can you um, expound on it? Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, kind of clarify things, you know, versus I put this out there and now I'm taking that uh, what you said, because I believe and have faith in you rather than having faith in God and believing, um, believing the spirit of God that dwell in, uh, inside of each and every one of us. You know, it's a test the spirit by the spirit. You know, yes. sometimes people feel like, you know what, because this person has the the title as a pastor, whatever they say is gospel. You know, but if it's not in line with the word of God, it has to be questioned. It has to be questioned and mm -hmm. you know, but it has to be done in in in, in decency and in yep. order. You know, so when it comes to those two faithful servants, they believe in the mission. And Paul ensured that he was not doing anything outside the will of God. You know, and they have faith and they believed in that. So he, Paul was very careful when he, when he was, every time he goes out there, he know, hey, you know, make sure you do this. Make sure you, 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 you thank this person for me. You know, he giving, um, 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 greetings is greeting um those who need to be greeted and rewarding those who need to be rewarded you know if mm -hmm. acknowledging that's the word actually acknowledging those who need to be acknowledged and he makes sure that he did that so that's all i want to add from my perspective amen good points there let's go on to verse six through nine um and it reads this give my greetings to mary who has worked so hard for your benefit, okay? Um, Paul is, is making sure that as he writing to the Romans, um, when they read this letter, he uh, that they understand that Mary had been working for them too and working that they be blessed as well, okay? He go on to say in verse seven, greet Andronicus and Jun Junia, Jun Janiah, my my fellow Jews who were in prison with me. Okay, so they've been released. They they ain't in prison no more with him. Okay, he said, "Greet my fellow Jews who was in prison with me. They are highly respected among apostles, and became followers of Christ before I did." Okay, greet um, and Pleiades. My dear friend in the Lord, greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend um, Stachus. Okay, so so we we see here that Paul, as we've all said, he's being particular who he give greetings to. But one of the things that um, I want that I that I saw when I was studying is. Is that right there where it says, and give my greetings to believers from the household of Arist Aristobulus. Aristobulus. The way this is written, that Aristobulus ain't, ain't a believer, <laughs> but his family is. And his family has been a blessing to Paul's ministry. And, and so... Paul is being very careful with his greetings and his acknowledgement and, and how he wants to credit the saints of God. He, he, he's not just throwing everybody in there. He don't want nobody to be confused. But thank God for his household. Okay. Now, it also goes on to talk about um, how that, where is this piece right here? Where it talked about they was respected among apostles. Okay, I went too far, I think. Okay, yeah. Greet um, Andronicus and Juna, my fellow Jews who were in prison with me. I'm in verse seven. They are highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Christ before I did. Okay. What this, when I was studying, it was talking about that there's a possibility that this team was also apostles, just not of the original 12. 
when it made the statement that they were re respected among apostles, okay? The studies say that the, the, that um, Andronicus and Juniah, um, which is Ju like Julia in the female term, um, not term, but form of the name, is a husband and wife team as well. And how that to be respected among the apostles that that they was apostles themselves, but not of the original 12. Okay, I can't confirm it or deny it. The issue is, is that Paul is, is giving them greetings and he's making mention of them being a respected among the apostles. So they've been in the presence of the apostles for him to say that they are respected among the apostles, which goes to this whole thing about leadership and who can lead and who can be over, okay? Because a, the office of an apostle is more of a governmental type um, office, okay? And, and so if this is the case, then we just have to allow God to be God. And, and, and since he already said there's no difference between male and female, Jews and, 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 and Gentiles, just let God be God. And, and all the other stuff, as Minister Arthur told us in verse in chapter 14, all the other stuff that don't matter, just let it be. We we don't have to prove a point. We don't we don't have to make something be an issue because we don't understand. And a lot of the times, stuff we don't understand, we make it an issue just instead of just humbling ourselves and just being like, okay, all right, well, so and so and so and so. Jesus said it like this if, if they're not against me, mm -hmm. they're for me. Okay. And when, when, when and, and so we, we have to be careful when we start saying that this one can't be this for God and they can't do this for God. When we see God using duckies, when we see God using prostitutes, when we see God using people that is not saved. And then to say that because I am saved, he can't use me. We have to be careful um, with that. So greet the am, am polite and Colitus, verse 8, my dear friend in the Lord, and greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachus. Going over to verse 10, um, which I had jumped to accidentally, greet Apellus, a good man, hmm. whom Christ approves. Okay, now, remember, he's writing to Jews and Gentiles. And he's letting them know. He's using some of that terminology from chapter 14. He said, God approves of it. So what, in other words, what I take from that is there may be some questions or, or some concerns about some of the things that he believe and that he do uh, uh, that might be different from what some of the people here is doing or what the majority is doing. Paul is coming out. From the very beginning, saying he's a good man who God approves, who Christ approves of. So you, we got to understand there's some people that God approves of that look different, sound different, do things a different way. The, the standard is God's word. The standard is not my organization. The standard is not how we do things. It's how we obey what God has said. And so he said, greet Apellus a good man whom Christ approved. And give my greetings to the believers from the household of uh, Aristobulus. Guess his household. Okay. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Nar Narcissus. Okay. another he, He's talking to another household. Give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa, the Lord's workers, and to dear Persis, who has who has worked so hard for the Lord. Greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own. 
and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. Y'all know this Rufus, according to study, is the same one. This was Simon's son that I preached about during Black History. Okay, that now Paul is saying, hey, um, that the Lord picked him out to be his very own. And so Paul is recognizing the importance and greeting Rufus. And, and he goes on to the point that he said, and his mama, because his mama has been like a mama to me. Y'all, th 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 this is something when, uh, because Paul is saying, I needed the help of others. That bottom line is, I couldn't have did what I did without these people who I ran into somewhere along my ministry, okay? He'd never been to Rome, so he didn't meet these people in Rome. So somewhere in his first, second missionary journey, he met these people, okay? And they're not there in prison with him. They are in Rome. This is where he's writing to, but he met them somewhere and they played instrumental parts in his life. And he's, and he's saying that at some point, man, Rufus mama probably cooked for me. She encouraged me when I felt like giving up. And she, he said that she was like a mama to me. So just like a, a mother would treat their own child, Paul is saying that's what she was to me. And, and, and I never forget that. So 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 give her greetings because I, I haven't forgot how she treated me. And Rufus, how man, he encouraged me. And, and, and not only did he encourage me, but Christ Jesus chose him to be his very own. Yes, Kim. I was going to say, this is one of the things that makes it so important that when we are in a body, that we just come in and be who we are. Mm -hmm. That we don't know how long we're going to be with each other. We don't have time for this whole, let me check you out for a year and see if I'm going to interact with you and this and that. When we get into a place, be who we are, because God did not forget about our personality. God right. did not forget about what he gave us, the skills that we have, our nurturing, our, our, our ability to be encouraging, our ability to motivate, all of those things. When God sends us to a place or allows us to be there, He we come in and they're going to benefit if we do what we are called to do yes. if we be our whole self. So all of this hedging and waiting to see if I'm going to come all the way in or if I'm going to get involved or I may be hurt because I may only be here six months. What we're seeing is we don't know how long these people were in Paul's life, but it wasn't for 20 and 30 years. He's only been doing this for a certain amount of time and they are now in a place where he is not. So every moment that we have to interact and to be who we are, be it. Mm -hmm. if, if, if if people aren't used to it, I remember people were saying to you when you would say, I love you to the ladies, they were like, what is he saying? But that's your personality. And then they begin to appreciate it and be like, oh, okay, well, it's different from whatever. But this is what we got to understand. God, when he sends people into a place, he knows what each of us needs. We're coming fully packed. And 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 there's no need to hedge and wait and see. We miss out so much on who, how much more we could have grown and how this person can impact us if we just sitting around waiting to feel like I can be around this person. We have to be careful about that because we're missing out on development. We're missing out on... Our, our iron being sharpened because we trying to hedge and see if you really are who I should be involved with. Listen, God will protect us. Yes. We watch and pray, but God is going to be the one to protect us. So we have to not be so uh, carnal in these moments. You come yes. in and you be yourself. It's encouraging. All of the different personalities. That God, yes. That God puts together in a, in a body it's because we need it. Mm -hmm. And so these people play this significant role to Paul. And what they could see is it's a lot of them in that area. Mm -hmm. And so now this church should really be benefiting from all of the different people yes. that he is greeting because they should still be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and, and that, that that's so true because 
when when God sent us places, he sends our gifts too, mm -hmm. along with our personality. And, and, and if any of them suffer, then we may have to question, are we in the right place? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to change right. who I am when God has already approved of me. When God has gifted me, I should not have to tone it down just because this is who I am. I ain't got time to be worried about, oh, you're going to be jealous. Yeah. No. no, 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 no. I need to do my part because if I do my part, I can get you over that mindset of, you know, I don't know about them, this and that. There was many, so many times that Saul came to himself and he said, you know what? David, you could have killed me mm -hmm. in that cave. But son, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to come after you. The only reason why he kept doing it was because of the devil. But within himself, he realized that at some point, man, you know what? I ain't got no reason to be jealous of you, David. You done showed me over and over that you love me. Okay? And this is one of the things that, that we have to be willing to diffuse is the mindset of others that I'm I'm really going to to um with love and kindness I'm gonna put it on you I'm gonna put a heap of coals on your head with with love and kindness and this is what the people did to Paul and what Paul did to the people this is why he can remember them by name he ain't just say y'all, but he, he, he's talking. He done made mention of how he remembered different households. He re, he remembered different couples. He remembered one, different ones. And like I said, he, he never been to Rome. So he didn't meet these people in one place. This has been a part of his journey. And he reached back and he remembered these people by their name. Are there any um, questions or comments? All right, Let, let's keep on going here. Um, verse 14 through 16. And it reads, give my greetings to and as as in Tritus, okay, and Flagon and Hermas and Petrobus, Hermas and his and the brothers and sisters who met with me. Mm -hmm who meet with them, I'm sorry. Give my greetings to Philogus, Philogobus, Julia, okay, Nereus, and his sister, and to o Olympus and all the believers who meet with them. Greet each other with the sacred kiss. All the churches of Christ send you their greeting. So Paul ends this particular section. We'll get into verse 17 next week. But he ends this particular greeting to his to the saints and his friends by just saying, hey, to the ones that meet with you, I'm not able to meet with you. But give them greetings. They meet with you. They open up their homes to you. Because back then, church people was doing prayer meetings and things in, in their homes. So take something for people to open up their homes. Yeah. It really do. It's one thing to have a Zoom line and, and you ain't invite nobody to your home. But it's a whole nother thing to say, hey, y'all come on in. We This ain't no Zoom line. We just going to have some church. And you ain't worried about folks stomping. And the stuff falling off the wall, and and if they're gonna break anything, you just you just want to have church. That's one thing. And Paul wanted to make sure that he gave greetings um, to these people um, who met with them, and to all the believers. And he said, "Greet them with a holy kiss." Now, this was with a sacred kiss. And King James is talking about a holy kiss. This was the greeting of that time, okay? That they would be people with a kiss. Mary, you remember Jesus rebuked one household he went into. I can't remember the person's name, but he, he said that, 
You didn't even greet me with a kiss when they was trying to talk about what Mary was doing to him. And he said, you didn't even greet me with a kiss. He was expecting his kiss. And so people of God, don't forget about the people who have helped us get to where we're at. Every now and then, reach out to them. They help you get promoted. Reach out to them. I, there, there, there's some, some, some Masonic and, and some um, fraternity uh, men that, that helped me along the way. I, I thank them. They, ain't, they, they don't replace God. I thank them that God, that God used them to, to help me. There's some folks that have lied for me. It wasn't my job to go back and say, no, 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 they lied. No, don't believe. No, no, no. They they lied for me. What's that child name? Um, Rahab. Rahab lied um, for the spies. God blessed her for, for God looked at it that for, not from the last standpoint, but she risked her life for them. And there's been people in our life that have done some things that weren't Christian like. But God knew he can count on them because they was <laughs> they was sinners, so he can count on them to be true to they to what they was. He can't count on Elder Norman to lie for me. He can't count on Sister Benny to lie for Kim. Right. But those that lie, he can count on them. And so I encourage you tonight, don't forget about people who have blessed, been a blessing, who God has used to be a blessing to you um, over your life and that have helped you get to the place where you at. It's been more than your family. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. It's been more than your family. And it's been more than people in the church. God has used other people to be a blessing to